And I'm back for a third time. It's the same day. That's why I'm wearing the same shirt. All right. I am going through a medical issue. Not bad. Kidney stone. And I'm actually passing it right now. So I'm not in pain. Taking something for that. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be doing videos, honestly. But um, I went to see the doctor today. And because of my age, I'm getting up there in age, I have to go do this, all this stuff. I don't go to doctors. I don't, I don't like going. I, if you don't know, what you don't know can't hurt you. So <laughs> I just don't go. But I'm married to this woman in here who won't leave me alone. And she's making me go. Yeah. So, this is Dr. O, O-H-E, Dr. O, and we're in there, and I don't want to be there, and he's asking me all these questions. Um, I'm, like I said, uh, I've passed kidney stones before, but uh, each time I do, it actually does damage to my kidney. And 90%, I've had one kidney stone out of my right kidney, but all the others have come out of my left kidney. And this particular stone is creating havoc as it goes down the tube from my kidney to my bladder. So he's asked me many questions. I'm in there talking to him. And uh, it's a war that Dr. O and I are having. And so... As we're talking, I tell him that you can assign a day to every single day of the year. And that the moon, while it's super important because it represents the bride, it is not perfect. It does not line up. There is no occasion. It is not a Sabbath moon because the Sabbaths come every seven days. And that equals 28. The moon comes around every 19 and a half days. If you take 19 and a half, you multiply it by 12, you will land on two, uh, 354 days. You will fall 10 days too soon. You will count, you'll come up across your, your feast days wrong. You will always do that. So I'm having this discussion with Dr. O, and it's like a little battle that we got going on, and it's so cool. Thus, Every new year on the day the sun equalized, not the equinox. The equinox literally means equal night. We are looking at the equal lux. The equal lux means equal day. We are not children of the night. We are children of the day. We walk in the day so we do not stumble. It was a clue from Jesus as to are there not 12 hours in the day. In fact, this does happen. It happens every single year. It has happened every single year since creation, and it will happen throughout the millennium. It will never change. Thus, every new year, on the day the sun equalized the day and night, a dark, concealed moon would rise with the sun on the horizon. This is what they keep talking about. This is what they see. The problem is, is that the Jews were forced to worship the moon in 400 BC. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. Prior to that, they were looking at the fourth star, which you can see Pegasus up there, that four star right down there at the bottom, right at the wing of Pegasus is called Algenib. When that star skirts along the horizon at 545 in the afternoon, on March the 16th, they know that that is the day of equal parts. That's what they were looking for. They don't stand there and stare up looking for the first liver of the moon. They were standing there staring up looking at the four-star algenib skirt along the horizon. When it skirts along the horizon in Israel, that is March 16th. That is the day of equal parts. That's the equalox. It is also, ironically, you can go into time and date right now, right now, and put in March 16th, and you will see that that is the day that has 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours at night. The very next day, March the 17th, will have more daylight than night. It is equalizes at some point on March the 16th. Would rise 
with the sun on the horizon. Amazingly, this is exactly what we see on March the 16th and 17th during the 19th moon cycle. Now, the problem is they will never see this date. They never get the head of the year right. They will never call March the 17th the first day of the year. And the reason they will never do that is because they're using the equinox, the day that is not equal. It is not equalized on that day in Israel. It is way past on that day in Israel. The only day that is equalized is March the 16th. You have several witnesses to that fact. You have the four star of Algenib skirt along the horizon, and you have, they didn't have time and date, but, you know, they, we've been de-evolving since the beginning. We think we're evolving, we're not. We're de-evolving. They were so much smarter than we are today. Uh, they knew when the head of the year was. And from there, they knew when they could go into that temple and not die. Until about 400 BC, they no longer knew because they were forced to use the moon. This is the square of Pegasus in the northeast sky in Jerusalem. It rises on March the 16th every year with the star Algenib appearing on the horizon at 5.45, I said p.m. before, but it's 5.45 a.m. just before sunrise, and it is the sign of the last day of the year, ending the winter season. Right there. It ends winter right there. So, uh, spring begins on March the 17th. The square of Pegasus, and this is also true, it does the same thing at 5.47 p.m. at sunset, um, on September the 14th every year. What's the next day? September the 15th. Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. So the Square of Pegasus also appears as shown above on September the 14th every year. It's exactly 182 days out. There is no mathematical equation for a moon at going at uh, 29 and a half days each month. It's just there is no equation that will make it equal 182. You will lose days every single time you do that. Rising in the northeast sky at 5.47 p.m. just after sunset, and it is the sign of the last day of summer, the summer season. So summer ends and fall begins on September the 15th, Rosh Hashanah the Feast of Trumpets. In the Book of Enoch, now I know Enoch's from way before the flood, and how important is that guy anyway? He's not in the Bible, and I personally don't think he should be. These writings, the only way we have them is they made it through the flood, and someone at some point, somebody in, in the uh, family line hid them in the uh, Dead Sea, and they were found very conveniently at the end, right now. Right now, knowledge is being increased. They've had this handed down over the generations, but when they find the Dead Sea Scrolls and they compare it to what we have, it is almost identical. There was a book of Enoch. Uh, again, I don't, it should not be in the Bible. Jubilee shouldn't be in the Bible. None of these books should be in the Bible at all. And the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly so they do not advance nor delay their position by a single day unto eternity, but complete the years with perfect justice in 364 days. We find this in the book of Jubilees, 2, 16 and 17. And he completed all his work on the sixth day. And all that is in the heavens and on earth and in the seas and in the abyss and in, and in the light and in the darkness and in everything. And he gave us a great sign for the day of the Sabbath that we should do work six days and should rest on the Sabbath from all work. All the angels of the face of... Uh, what? Of the face? All the angels of the face and all the angels that cry... Does that even make sense? All the angels of the face and all the angels that cry, holy to us, these two great kinds. He said that we should observe the Sabbath with him in heaven and on earth. So, 
Does it move around every year? No, it's the same day. It's always the same day. How do you know it? Because it's four star of Alginib and it's the day of equal light. The new moon calendar, this is what I was telling you before. This is, this is uh, me and this guy. We're just going around and around. I mean, he's a doctor. I love this guy. He's a great person. But does he know everything? I don't know. I have no idea. The new moon calendar was the official calendar of the Greeks. This was not the official calendar of the Jews. This was the official calendar of the Greeks. And when Alexander the Great conquered the Middle East in the 4th century BC, the lunar calendar was introduced and was gradually accepted by most of the people, except for the Hebrew people. In 172 BC, King Antiochus appointed Menelaus as Jerusalem high priest to introduce the Greek way of educating the young people and to completely Hellenize the Hebrew people. He also sent a senator from Athens to give the Hebrew people an ultimatum to forsake the laws of their god Yah and to follow the king's orders and to be put to death. So most of the Hebrew people followed the king's orders to save their families and many were put to death because some of them wouldn't follow it. Some of them knew that it had nothing to do with the moon. These people actually worshipped the moon like it was a god. King Antiochus forced the Hebrew people to celebrate the birthday of the month every month at the time of the month of the moon's first visibility. Now, I got to tell you this. In English, it's month and moon. And we have this little wordplay that we do now because, and I'll tell you, it's not fair to every other uh, language on the planet. Moon, moons, they're saying now. In English, it's mo a month and moon. Isn't that convenient to call it a month, right? It's the beginning of the, it's the, beginning of the month. Our Bible has translated Rosh Chodesh into New Moon instead of New Month. Our Bible was translated in 1611. Theirs was written back then. When exactly, I'm not sure, but I can tell you that the New Moon concept was brought about in 400 BC. So it's been around a long time. And to try to get past that and tell people that it has nothing to do with moon has been very difficult, honestly. It's been very difficult. In Spanish, moon is luna. Month is mess. They don't sound alike. They don't get to say month. <laughs> it's not fair to them, right? They can't say month. I don't know what it is in other languages. I would imagine in Italian it's very simple to mess and luna. So... Um, Think about that for a second. All right, let's go back to the pictures. All right, so the Greeks, Alexander the Great, forced the concept of following the moon on the Jews. Before this, what were they using to note the head of their year? Was it anything to do with the moon? No, it had nothing to do with the moon. In the book of Jubilees, 6, 34 through 8, and all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the years and will forget the months and seasons and Sabbaths and they will go wrong as to all the order of the years. For I know and from henceforth will I declare it unto thee and it is not of my own devising for the book written before me and on the heavenly tablets, the division of days is ordained. What does ordained mean? It's set in stone. They don't change. Lest they forget the feasts of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles after their error and after their ignorance. Who's the Gentiles? 
It was the Greeks who forced the new moon calendar. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon and how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. The moon makes a full turn every 29 and a half days. When you multiply 29 and a half by 12, you will come up with 354 days. It is 10 days too soon. It is not 364 days. Our Earth travels around the sun every 364 days, but we have what's called a side reel day, which readjusts the Earth back to pointing at exactly the same point as the sun. Remember, we're moving, we're spinning. So many things are happening to, to, to compensate for the final part where we're locked back in. It is 365 and a quarter days side real day but it's actually 364 you can go google that because google is where we find everything for some reason for this reason the years will come upon them as they will destroy i read all that let's see make it 364 days okay they will go wrong as to the months sabbaths feasts and jubilees for this reason i command and testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them for after thy death, thy children will disturb so that they will not make the year 364 days only. For this reason, they will go wrong as to the months and the seasons and the Sabbaths and the festivals, and they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. The birthday of the month festival was observed by most of the Hebrew people because they feared King Antichus. After the death of King Antichus in 164 BC, some of the Hebrew priests tried to restore the solar calendar, but the Greek new moon influence was all around them. Later in 359 CE, which I imagine that's AD, Hillel II, introduced and fixed calculated new moon calendar that is based on the conjunction of the earth moon and sun and this lunar calendar has been used by the jews and others to this day this calendar is 2400 years old it is 20 it was it was around when jesus was here but jesus knew the correct calendar he knew the correct calendar because when Lazarus died on March the 16th and the head of the year was moved, Rosh Hashanah, from September the 15th back 182 days, he didn't budge. Why didn't Jesus go to his friend who had just died and raise him? Why did he wait for those four days? He waited because he knew that this festival from the 17th and 18th the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, had been moved to March the 17th, and he had to wait. He was notified on March the 16th. He waited March the 17th, March the 18th. He walked for two days, four days on the fourth day. I mean, it, he was notified on the 16th, but 17, 18, and then he walked for two days because he couldn't move on the 17th and 18th because Rosh Hashanah is a two-day feast. On March the 17th, he... he sits until March the 19th. He walks until March the 20th. On March the 20th, he raises Lazarus. It all fits like a glove. It's interwoven like a puzzle, and it can't, from what I can see, be undone. All right, let's continue here. So, I wanted to show you another example of why this timeline is accurate there are 30 days in every single month except for four and there's four gates and giving us 364 days in a year and if this is not accurate if there are less days 354 365 if there are these days if there are not 364 days this timeline will not work god warns Noah, get into the ark, because in seven days I will cause it to rain upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. If you get into the ark now, he gets into the ark. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth in the 600th year of Noah's life. And in the second month, we have a date, we have a perfect date. The second month and the 17th day of the month, 
the same day were all the fountains of the deep broken, o- broken up and the windows of the heavens were opened and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Now, in Noah's time, the head of the year, before God changed it in Exodus 12, pre-flood, the head of the year was September the 15th. If you go to the second month and 17th day, which is 47 days later, exactly 47 days later, you will land on Heshbon 17. You will land on Halloween day. If September the 15th is always Rosh Hashanah, always features trumpets, you add 47 days, it will always be on Halloween. We have a marker. Does it move? Does the anniversary of the flood ever move from Halloween? It does not. It is always Halloween. Does it care about the moon? Does this, anything in here talk about the moon? It does not. It is 47 days. Exactly. 47 days from the head of the year. It was the second month and 17th day. Let's get some more dates. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark. The ark is being lifted. Jesus, because it was pitched within and without, this is a picture of Jesus. Jesus has them sealed and secure. What are they doing right now? They're going through tribulation. They are protected. They received a double portion, but they are going through tribulation. They are in it. They are being lifted up above the earth. The waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went up the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. 50 cubits. 50 cubits is about 75 feet. 75 feet is about the length of a semi-trailer, uh, tractor and trailer. You drive down the road, you see a semi. They're about 75 foot long. If you stand it on end for end, that's how much higher the water was than the highest mountain on this planet. 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Let's see here. Where are we at? Right here. All right, now let's start, no moon, let's just start on a date, September the 15th. Now let's go from there to the second month and 17th day, which is Heshbon 17. When I assign every day the sun comes up to a date on the Hebrew calendar, because I know how many days are in each month, because I have it written over here. A little cheat sheet. First month is Tishri. The second month, for now this is for Noah. You can see it in pink. The first month is Tishri. The second month is Heshbon. Heshbon 17 is when the flood began. 30 days for Tishri and 17 days is 47 days after the head of the previous year is right here. September the 15th, you go 40 days and you land, 47 days, and you land here on the flood on Halloween, exactly, perfectly. Okay, so then it rained for 40 days. Here we have the flood beginning on October the 31st. It rained for 40 days. When did it stop? Right there where it says flood ends. It ended on Kislev 27 on December the 10th. That's exactly when it ended. When we assign a day to every day the sun comes up, that's when it ended. Oops, let me go back to where I was. Where was I? I don't remember now. I think here. Yes. And the flood was upon the earth. Okay, we read that. Let's see. And God remembered Noah. When did he remember Noah? He remembered Noah at the end of the 40 days. The rain, he made it stop. The height of the water was at its maximum height, and it's, he stayed up there. He stayed up there from 40 days until 150 days. The water did not subside for 110 days after he was raised up. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped. This is after 
40 days. And the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually 110 days. Because remember, it rained for 40. And then on the 150th day, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in this seventh month and the 17th day. This is exactly 100. And this is the first 153 that we found. 150 days after the flood begins, you go 40 days. The rain stops. He stays floating for another 110 days until it's 150 days. What happens at 150 days? 150 days let me take you to it. So I, I'm looking at it, but I'm not having you look at it. Where did the flood begin? Where are you at? Where are you at? Flood, October 31st, right there. Flood begins. 40 days of the flood. On December the 10th, you count 110 more days, or you can count 150 days from Halloween. Heshbon 17. If there are any more or any less days... In any of these days, and at months right here, if there's 26 or if there's 31 every single month or there's 29, it will not land at the cross. This timeline is the only one I've seen that you can count from the flood and go 153, uh, 150 days and land on the cross. Exactly. No moon. Just the cross. Just everything we need. 150 days. The seventh month and the 17th day. For Noah, the seventh month, you look down there, it is Nisan and the 17th day. That's the day Jesus rises. It is also the day the ark rested after the flood, 153 days after the flood began. Everyone said, well, it's 150 days. You talk about five months and that's the same day. Nope. Nope, he, 150 days after lands on the cross. Do you think that I just made that happen? No, I did not. I learned this information when I prayed and prayed and prayed over this and said, Lord, if, if I don't know the first day of the year and I can't look at the sun coming up and assign a day to it, I will never know when your feast days are. And then, I'm not the first to find this, by the way. This is all over the internet. You can find it. But I am the first that I know of. And I, hope, I pray there's more. I don't know. I have never seen it. But the first to put it onto a timeline and say, look, it matches. How does it match? It has to match because it makes sense. So 153 days or the seventh month and 17th day is when the ark rested. It's also the day Jesus rises and defeats death. All right. Where are we at here? Right here. 40 days in earth and increase. Okay. Now. God remembered, oh, oh, we're right back to my timeline. Okay. All right. So we continue on with Noah. I didn't take the rest of the pictures for some reason, but we continue on with Noah and we find out that right here, when the tops of the mountains were seen, remember he, the ark rested and then the tops of the mountains were seen. They were seen on Tammuz 1. June 16th, there is a count. The tops of the mountains are seen. From there, Noah releases the raven and the dove. The raven flies to and fro. The dove returns with no rest for the sole of her foot. And he does this on the 9th of Av. On the 15th of Av, he releases the dove, and the dove returns with an olive branch. And then on the third time, the first is the last, and the last is the first, Noah releases the dove. He does not return on Av 22. But then we see on Elul 1, 40 days before, what is that? 40 days, let's see, 40 days something, 40 days before the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is how long the devil tempted Jesus, all the way up to the Day of Atonement, which is Tishri 10, September the 24th. That's exactly 40 days after Jesus was baptized. The dove returns nine days 
something is completed because it's nine days. Nine days after the dove returns on August the 6th, uh, uh, the dove doesn't return, sorry, on August the 6th, it does return uh, when God says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And the dove came down as a spirit and he landed on Jesus or, or came around Jesus. And he, the moment he was baptized. And from that moment, 40 days later, he was tempted and it lands on the day of atonement. When you count, the sun comes up as a day and the sun comes down. And then the sun comes up, it's another day. And it is also a Pentecost, day of atonement. We count Pentecost is a Sunday. We count from the Sabbath after, seven days, and then we count 50. It is 57 days in between each one of these Pentecosts. So, uh, this happened today. Let's see here. There is another 40-day count from September the 15th. From Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets, to October the 24th, this is the day that Methuselah dies. This is also the day that Noah is told to get into the ark. It is seven days before the flood, and that's a 40-day marker. 40 and 7. Another 40 and 7 jump up. There's so many 50 and seven, and 40, and seven, and every single time I find my timeline is just getting thicker and thicker. It's so much stuff coming in here. And that's all, folks. Uh, I wanted to point out Looking Up. Uh, she's posting a lot of stuff by T.W. Tram. He does a lot of good work, a lot of good calculations. And, of course, 2023 is still the year. We're at it. We're at the last moments. This is the time. If you were going to give your life to Jesus Christ, now is the time. There is not much time left. So those are my recordings I just did. All right, Dr. O, there's my proof. It is not the moon. It is the sun. And why they use the moon, though it's 2,400 years old, it is not accurate. So... Hopefully he gets a kick out of that. He's not mad because I'm just playing, just having fun. Um, just like Hourly Watch says, keep your eyes up. Keep looking up. It's coming. Go read TW Tram. Go subscribe to those channels that I told you. Again, I don't subscribe to channels that uh, don't recognize Jesus Christ as God. I don't promote them here. I promote everybody that does. And uh, anybody, I, I'm not saying I disagree with, but if you can't say that, then I have to disagree with you. And I won't, uh, I won't lead anyone to you uh, in that fashion. I will just uh, say your name if I feel you're wrong. But... I think that we are right around the corner. I think that this rapture event is here, right around the corner, and it is just going to, boom, it's just going to happen. Like, at any moment, it's just going to take place, and we're going to be like, bam. One second we're standing here doing silly stuff, <laughs> worried about silly things, and the next second, or you're telling somebody, hey, if you see me go, poof, all of a sudden you go, they're like, I know exactly what just happened. So... Um, at any rate, uh, God bless everyone. Go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And Except the Lord in your heart. You're running out of time. I can promise you, if you heard me say, if you see me go, and you see this event happen, and you see us go, you won't be caught unaware. You will not receive that. You will not believe it's aliens. You're going to be in the dark for about three days, because I'm telling you, the power is going to go out. It's going to be it's going to be something else. But that little mustard seed planted back there is going to start to sprout. And you can be like, oh, do, 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 do. However they do that back in the old days. Do, do, do. Aliens have just landed. Look at this. Here's an alien. Like to meet you, sir. Set my shadow up there. <laughs> like to meet you, sir. Uh, yeah. What are you doing here? Uh, we came to help mankind. We're here to help you. And we have the cure for everything. And uh, without us, there's nothing else in this world. You guys are going to be great. We're going to we're going to take care of you. 
there's going to be all kinds of, well, there was a nuclear blast. Maybe, you know, the phones are going to be out for three days. You're not going to be able to call anybody. It's just going to be rumors that run around. And all of a sudden, the power comes on. This nuclear blast went off and just evaporated people out of nowhere. They look like blue bulbs of light, orbs of light just taking off. We don't know what happened. Their chemistry must have reacted to the nuclear reactor because we're all so scared of nuclear uh, explosions. We've seen how horrible it is, and we have. It is horrible. But that must have been what happened to all those people. They were just, their body chemistry was affected. And that's why certain people left. But we're the ones that are left here. Uh, God has chosen us to stay and take over the world. And this is going to be great for us and follow us. Oh, by the way, we have this mark. It's no big deal. Uh, I'm going to give you some money for free if you just take it. And then uh, get your life back on track. There's all going to be all kinds of lies that are told. So be ready for that. And again... If um, Patrick over at uh, Hourly Watch is correct, and he's seen it, I'm seeing it, he showed it to us. Go watch his last video. It's absolutely staggering. Um, all the different, I mean, Satan is there, Miriam is there, the child is there. All these things are in place except for <laughs> the moon. <laughs> it's in the wrong spot. It's supposed to be at her foot, which does happen, by the way. Everything's still in play. But it does happen on the 18th, which, by the way, is the day after God rested. God rests on the 17th day, on the seventh day, because he begins creation on September the 11th, 911. All right. Repo Man 64, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if I find anything else out, um, or we can just get on here and have a little fun and try to understand this. Again, I'm poking fun at the moon. Um, I don't see it, but it is there. There is an equation that they're using. Again, I don't know how to do it. Maybe that's why I don't believe in it because I don't know how to do it. But there is an equation that they're using that might be legitimate in that the first sliver represents the first day of the month and then the full is the full moon. Yeah, the full moon represents the 15th. Again, it's 29 and a half days. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to make 29 and a half days into 30 and 31. I, I meant, met, uh, mathematically, it still comes up to 354 days a year. I, you're going along and then you're like, all right, it landed 10 days too soon. So uh, we'll just keep on going the next month. Oh, it landed 20 days too soon. Man, this is getting off, off the charts. What are we going to do? Go another year. Uh-oh, now it's 30... I know. We'll just add a second December. We'll just have Christmas twice and New Year's twice. It'll be great. We'll just add a whole new December to it. So we have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, November, December, and December. And then we're back on track with those 10 days. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I just can't. Uh, but, you know, some people believe in it and they have made sense of it up here. And again, somehow, somehow, I don't know where those six days went from the head of the year because they were on the 23rd. I'm on the 17th. I don't know where those six, seven days went. But by the time we reach six months later, we're all together on the same page. You can go Google it right now. Google's an incredible source of information. Forget about the sun going up and the days assigned to it. Go to Google. September the 15th is, in fact, this year at nightfall Rosh Hashanah. They are correct. This year. This year, they will tell you that Yom Kippur, the day that uh, Jesus is done uh, with his... Is it Yom Kippur? Jesus is done with his uh, temptation? I, I lost it now. But, yeah. Anyway. Yom Kippur. Day of Atonement. Tishri 10. Google says September the 24th. They are correct. And then we have tabernacles. Jesus came to tabernacle with us. This is the day Jesus was born. He was born on September the 29th on Tishri 15. And they will tell you that tabernacles is this year, September the 29th. Just Google it this year. Then... Jesus is circumcised on the eighth day of Tabernacles. Tabernacles last eight days. That is Tishri 22, which happens to land on October the 6th. So the stories that 
line up in the Bible and the wonderful, absolutely wonderful YouTube channels that have discovered all of the feast days. And, and I've been able to take their hard work out of their Bible. I read the King James Bible. And I have not studied this nearly as hard as that other YouTube channel has. But I've studied it over the years. And I've done a lot of math. My study, or what drives me, and what I search for, are dates. When I have these dates, I write them down, and I have years worth of those dates. And I did. Can you imagine how I felt when I said, "All right, I, I Google and I, I Google." <laughs> I did a lot of work to find out when March the seventeenth was, when the head of the year was, and what made sense, and and does not contradict whatsoever what the Bible says that I can find anyway. Uh, can you imagine my surprise when I realized that God turned time back six months in the head of the year it used to be on Rosh Hashanah and that when you go to the second month of the 17th day, it lands on Halloween. I was like, okay, that's weird. Uh, my initial one has like 25 lines on it. This thing has 100 lines on it. It was There's so much information that's coming in. Again, some like as I work up to a date or a date that is coming currently, I redo all the math to make sure that I look at a calendar and say, what day is this? And then I put the Hebrew date on there and I count the days and make sure that it's all accurate. So as we go forward, it starts to make so much more sense. So, all righty, Repo Man 64. I have to go back and recalculate uh, Jesus. Uh, Oh, no, I don't. There it is. It's right there. I didn't see it. Uh, I don't even have my glasses on. Uh, Jesus is baptized 40 days later, does land on Yom Kippur. So that that is accurate. But I keep working on that. So I really need to uh, – I wish I had the – the problem with putting this into a computer program, if I don't put it in and somebody else does, I make changes to this thing and recalculations to this thing and new dates added to this thing nonstop, you would be amazed at how many times a 7 happens and a 40 happens and a 50 happens and a 153 happens. You'd be amazed as it ties in and it just locks it in tighter and tighter. And you can't make it happen. You just can't, you can't possibly make 153 days land like I showed you six different times on this timeline to an exact day. It's just, you just can't make that happen. So anyway, um, while we do this, let's have fun. We have our faith. We are secure. Jesus did it all. And let's continue to search this out. If it's the moon, I think when we all get to heaven, <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot of people going, I thought it was the moon, but they're going to be in heaven. I know I was chosen for this. I thought it was the moon. But it's not the moon. The moon has nothing to do with it. The moon is there for blood moons. It's there for when you see these things. It's there to say it's at the foot of um, Virgo. Uh, but uh, it's not there to count your months. It just doesn't work as far as I can tell. All right. Repo Man 64. <laughs> I don't think anybody, some of you might understand what I'm doing. I'm having fun. And uh, hopefully we're all enjoying this video. Repo Man 64, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll chat with you again later.